What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Um, guys, what's up? It's your boy Darnell Jordan of S Town Productions. Sounding smooth on the track right now. Uh, <laughs> my bad, my bad, y'all. Um, thank y'all for joining me. Uh, I'm not going to waste too much time. Not going to waste too much time today. I want to run and get straight to it. Cause I know some people on YouTube might have some questions in regards to this. I'm going to do my best to try to answer as many questions as I can possible for this stream. Um, I feel that it's, to me, it's very important to kind of give the people uh, some information in regards to this. Um, so today's topic, we're talking about how to make this puppy over here, my lovely Roland Phantom X 6 keyboard that I've had for almost, oh gosh, I don't know how many years now. Six, uh, 15 years almost. I've had it since 07, 13 years. Um, and I'm still able to route this all through my DAWs and my computers and all that other stuff and make it sync and make it work. So, um, I'm going to show you guys a couple of things today, uh, how to route it, um, how to configure it in any way possible so for an example um how to have all 16 channels if you have old tracks in here you want to route to here via midi we'll show you how to do that we'll also talk a little bit about how to just go through all the uh, ins and outs and how to kind of use it and effectively and all that other stuff so routing is the first thing we're going to take care of today so uh without further ado let's get started i'm going to pull up this preset here this is just all my old stuff for Ableton, but we're not going to open into that today, all right? So, first thing we need to do, um, Roland Phantom X6 technically does not support um, Windows 10, per se. There's not a Windows 10 driver for it. So, for some people who are running Windows 8, Windows 7, that made that upgrade... Uh, you guys probably noticed that you guys weren't able to make that change. So I'm going to show you how we can kind of go around that very quickly. I won't get into too much detail. There's a link in the description, um, except for Twitch, but I'll get into that later. But there's a link in the description that kind of goes through the detail of how to do it. All right. What I'm going to show you is the first thing you have to do is go and get the driver itself. So you'll have to go to this website which is Roland's website that talks a little bit about the Phantom X6 workstation. Um, down here, you'll find all the drivers. My suggestion for you would to be find the most recent driver, which will probably be the Windows 10 version. I would either use that or I would maybe use the Windows 7 64-bit edition version. Okay, So keep in mind of that. That's going to be very important to make sure that this thing works. Okay? Um, the drivers are going to make a big difference for when we need to do the uh, installation. All right. Once you do this, uh, do not do anything else. After you download it, do not do anything else yet. Because the first thing you're going to have to do is to go into the advanced settings 
And for that to work, you have to go to um, advanced startup. So the way I've learned to do this is if I go and press Windows and go to um, reset this PC, it's going to open up to this prompt right here that's going to say advanced setup. As soon as I press restart now, it will send me into this window. This window allows me to do startup settings. Uh, so actually to get to here is going to be in the description. It's going to, there's going to be a section in the startup settings. Once it pops up, it's going to say troubleshoot. You're going to go into troubleshoot. So it'll be this section here, I believe. Yes. Yes. Advanced options. So there's going to be system restore, which you don't want to get into. You want to go into startup settings. Once you get into startup settings, you want to go to where it says, I think it does them all now, but there's a section in here, really what's the main important thing you wanna look at is this section here that says disable driver signature enforcement. What that does is it allows it to open, here it is, here's it again in brighter picture. What it does is it allows it to open, um, open up signature re enforcement. Basically what it, allows you to do it says okay we're not going to block this because we can't recognize it in a sense all right after you do that what you're going to have to do and i'm going to use this as an example this is not the driver this is not anything i'm telling you guys to go and get okay so uh let's see so say i'm using this yellow duck we're, we're just gonna use this example once you find the DAW driver that you need, you need to right click it and then you need to go to troubleshoot compatibility. It's going to show this. It's going to say go to recommended settings. Feel free to go to that recommended settings. And what that will allow you to do is do the setup like it's in Windows 7 or Windows 8. And then after you do that, it's going to ask for a restart. Once it restarts, let's let it restart. It's not a big deal then you should be able to route this to where it will notice the driver, do all the regular driver things that it needs to do. So don't do anything else until that. So for that, there's more videos and subscriptions someplace on YouTube and things like that to kind of explain that a little bit more, okay? As soon as you do that, then you should be done. After that, you, you should be more than well taken care of to go through um, and get your rolling, rolling Phantom X6 keyboard to function well all right so thought i would just go through that with you that's a little quick trick all right so um here's the next thing um this might be another thing that i can talk about real quick next thing i want to talk about is i'm using the behringer x32 rack um as my setup uh, now for me to route this to and i'll give you a quick picture if you can see here this is the m32 edit so for those of you guys who don't know, this is literally just, I can run how everything through my mixer through here. So if I want to route stuff, I can do it through my phone and all that stuff for those of y'all who know how to do this. So I have channel three and four are keys. Now, some people will have to go out and buy a bunch of, uh, uh, um, geez, a bunch of DI boxes. You don't really, I don't need a DI. I never really needed a DI box for this to work. And I don't have combo jacks. So the the secret, the way I've done this is this. Okay. And I'm just going to set this up. These little puppies right here is a XLR. Oop, hopefully I can get the focus in there. Hopefully you guys don't see that, see all that extra stuff in there too. So there it is. All right. So there it is. So there's the XLR and then there's the TRS. So that's exactly how I'm able to route all of my stuff. So TRS, XLR here, and then the other XLR that goes into the port goes into that. This goes into the female end. I plug it into, into that like so and plug the other channel into there. Now I got my stereo channel running through both. Uh, both channels of the X6, okay? Mind you, this also works for the X7 and the X8 as well. 
same same concept. I don't want to make sure I want to make sure everybody kind of understands that. Okay. All right. Let's get back into it. Here's the X32 edit. I have it routed through left and right here. So these are my physical channels. Um, and let's see. I want to make sure that it's being routed. Uh, it is. I'm only going to give you a little bit of what it can do. So that's three. Okay. So there is my keyboard. So there's your route. Okay. That's being routed directly to here and to one of the UMCs. That's more or less than anything else. So that's how I'm able to route it into there. This is being routed via USB. You do not need a MIDI control, uh, uh, one of those USB to MIDI um, cables. I've run it through just the same regular USB A into one of my USB hubs, and it works perfectly fine. I use it as audio. I use it as a MIDI controller, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Okay, so I'm going to start with Ableton. I know a lot of people use Ableton. So we're going to go into um, link MIDI section here. And then I want you to take a look. Uh, this one no longer exists anymore. I want you to take a look here. All right. Where my mouse is, is two Phantom X. And the reason why it says two is because it's going through a hub. So the hub might rearrange some numbers. So just be mindful of that when you plug it in. It might just say, say Phantom X. It might say three Phantom X, four Phantom X, five Phantom X, depending on what route routing number it's connected to on your or your USB hub or whatever you have on your computer. So just be mindful of that. So that's not a big, big to do. Um, so you can notice that the first thing I have is track input is on. And then sync and remote is off for now. Okay. And then I go down and I have out and I have track on and sync on. I don't know how it works. It just manages to work that way. So I don't have to go through that. Okay. Next thing I'll talk about is I've set up a custom preset um, to drop. So this is a, just a preset that I've made. You can see where it says Phantom L, R, R, F, X, this, that, and the third. So I'm going to explain a little bit of that to you, okay? So what it is is Phantom L, R basically is just your left and right channel, okay? So technically, this would be under three and four, all right? So the moment I go to three and four, I do this. I'm going to turn mute my end. So now I have... Um, my stereo left right channel getting sent over via left right here and then i have rx rfx one two three all the way up to 16 what that is is it allows what uh many channels are allowing you to do is allow you to have 16 different channels to send 16 different sets of signals of midi into each channel all right so if you notice here it says r r fx1 the reason why it says rf is because i said Roland phantom x that's the only reason why it's there um i'll try to find a way where i can send this over to you guys somehow so here's rfx1 i go down here's channel one and i'll raise this up a little bit to make it easier so here's channel one which is under auto you see where it says midi two oh, midi two phantom x and then channel one so this is very important because you want the MIDI to go to that Phantom X. And you only want it sent over to channel one. So here's channel one here. All right. Here's channel two. Here's channel three, four, five, six, so on and so forth, all the way over to 16. I've set this as a group. So what this allows me to do is a couple things. All right. I'm going to go ahead and shift this. Uh, camera over so you guys can take a look at what I'm dealing with here all right so pardon 
the uh, the angle and such, but hopefully I can answer enough questions while I go through this. All right. So let's go into some focus here. All right. Right here we have the Phantom X. I'm gonna go to song edit. For an example, I'm gonna go and select a song that did. Uh, let's go and select uh, this one, okay? I'm gonna press it. Now, what you'll notice is it's under, each section says both. I can use this under MIDI. There's a couple things I want you to start paying attention here. I'm gonna show you this, and I'm gonna show you what it's doing in Ableton. Um, so right now, all it is is sitting in pattern mode. So I have all these different patterns. Each track has its own different instrument. Okay. Uh, first off, I'm gonna go to mixer because these tracks are like so old that when I did route them, um, I was very heavy on reverb and that's before I was like a dy you know, a decent audio engineer all right cool so everything's being routed here so i'm gonna go and press restart and press play notice that i got it at 180 we'll talk a little bit about how i can change this to sync in with your daw in a second but i'm gonna start here I've got three channels. I'm just gonna move this forward. All right, so now, now we have this running. You can also see on the screen here, um, there's some signal being routed out into different areas. And you can notice because there's different sections being played out. So all the signals being sent in, but notice there's only certain channels that are being routed for specific areas. So for me to allow me to do this, what I'm going to do first is say if I want to just uh, sync everything up first, right? What I'll do is this. I'll go all the way down and select to the 16th one just for um, just for simplicity and S's and G's and all the other good stuff. All right. So I'm going to route it just like this. Okay. Here's all 16 on my channels. Here's my audio track. So it's going to play everything, but it's going to send me through different signals. Now, a couple different things that I can do here. I can have it to where I could just play it or uh, just like try to sync it up the best that I can with both. But here's an easier way to do this, okay? What you wanna do is you wanna first go to menu and I'm gonna go over to system. Once I get into system, I'm gonna go all the way over to where it says MIDI, I believe, I can't remember which one. Okay, so. Right now is under master mode. I'm going to select uh, slave MIDI mode. So what that's allowing me to do now is the moment that I press play on here, it should sync with this. All right, so now it's syncing with the tempo that is currently on um, the, ro um, the Ableton, right? So for me to change that, I gotta go into here, change it to 180 just to make sure it syncs. I'm going to do a pre-count. So what I'll allow, allow it to do is play catch up, right? So what I'll do now is I'm going to uh, press record.
All right. So, hi again. You can see my lovely face. So, let's zoom into into here. So, a couple things that I've recorded now. Um, I'm going to turn all of these off. And I could just do that by simply doing Control A to select all. And then just doing shift click or shift click to turn it arm off. Okay. So I have a couple things here. Number one, I have the audio track, which is synced over to the numbers. But what you'll notice is I actually have now individual MIDI tracks. All right. So this is just the guitar section on the bottom here. Um, bass line in the MIDI editor. I think track three is my orchestra. And then in the bottom, I have some of my drum stuff. So I have it routed. So for those of y'all who use Ableton, you can reconfigure it any way that you want. I can select the area. And if I do record... So now I have all that routed in the way that I want to, right? So now all this, I can do any editing that I want into here. And I could also replay it. Right, and I'll even and even with the replay, I can go back to that system, send it back to master, um, and turn that off. And what I'll have to do is just do Control A, select. I believe it's supposed to go back out. Ah, maybe not. Oh, it was under master. Okay, so you do have to have it under slave mode. That is if you wanted to play exactly what's being played there. Um, if I did, um, let's see, let's do get down. See, now it just wants to run exactly to where exactly it was playing. So um, that's not exactly where you want to do it for. So I want to go back to options and preferences. Here's the out. What I have to do is maybe sync the in and then turn system back to master. Make sure that they're both routed in the same way. Um, I'm going to turn all these off except for this one. Maybe I am doing it wrong. Hmm. It's been a while since I've done this, guys, so bear with me here. Uh, I have some empty routing here. We'll get into more detail in, in this in a little bit. I just want to make sure that you guys kind of mostly understand the concept of it. So you'll be, you'll be able to re-edit it and put it back into here. But in order for that, obviously, to work sometimes to hear everything is you make sure that that um, has to be the monitoring is in and it has to be on for you to check for for any of the edits that need to be done. So. Phantomix. So if I go to. Phantom X here. We're going to do channel two. Now, what it uh, should allow me to do is, oh, sync output. That's a little different. Wait, wait. Tempo override. So, I thought I figured this out. 
this part at least out to reroute it back into here so it'll play exactly what you have on there um strangely enough i don't think i did but uh i will at some i will as soon as possible once during the stream we'll get to that um to kind of make sure you guys can fully understand that uh let me go and double check and make sure there's not any questions uh currently got one viewer right now on my read only okay cool just making sure all right so uh next up uh, we will go through and talk a little bit about how to um, basically how to just have stuff played through here when you need it to be done. All right. So. Track input sync input track. And they were remote for any switch ports will be used for remote control live. So we won't do that. We just really just want to do tracking. And maybe we'll turn sync off. All right. So that's kind of just my quick little preset. So I can set this anything that I want to. So say, for example, I know this is just a MIDI track now. So what I could do is say if I went into the sounds panel, I know you guys can't, you guys probably are gonna be able to see this, but say if I wanted to pick a different guitar, I can click there and drag it. And now what that's done is it still allows me to do that same source. Ah, that's why, okay. Hang on a second. Now I know exactly why what happened. Once it's in end mode, guys, it won't allow you to do it. So you have to turn it to auto. So if I do that and if I went back to So I have a different sound here. This is the MIDI that's going into that. And then so on and so forth. I will have to go into each one and say, all right, uh, this is the Phantom X. This is channel three. I need to have it on the channel. Yep. So then I can do this. All right, now we got it. All right. So for each section now, for everyone that's in, I have to use the same thing to go out. So I'll go to my Phantom X, choose what channel. Here's four. And then for every each con conjunction, now you can have it play back exactly what you came in. And I can use a different plugin, or sorry, a different set of songs. Uh, this one's completely different. So now I have the interchangeable options to do any of the th op things that I want to do. Okay. So one through 16, the order to make sure that this works. Now I can go back and say, all right, here's the phantom out. I want the sync on. Okay. Do I do remote on too? And then. It sounds stupid, but it makes a lot of sense once you start changing different options for it so that gives you that option to do and everything's being played out and you can use any sound from any plugin or any stock sounds on anything running through ableton um it looks a little bit com complicated it really isn't uh and i want to make sure i want to stress that it can be done and it can be done effective effectively um I'll try to see if I can send some type of link where I can save the preset for you guys to check some of this out. All right. Um, so let's go back to camera only. Uh, let's see if I have an option where I've used this and did a different song for it. Actually, I'm going to go to my card files. So this is how I've managed to make like older songs. 
So I have to go back to, let's see, what is it? SDU. All right. Uh, we'll delete the files. Next up, um, here's a quick example of how I've done this and used it effectively. Right here, I have a small little loop. Let's go and change the height and the, the width of this, all right? Uh, first thing I have, So all that, all that is is just uh, a song that I did, but I had MIDI to go along with it, so I've recorded the audio as part of that with doing the syncing. Um, and I've managed to take that song, which I wish I could tell you what the title of it is, but I'll be sitting here all day trying to figure it out what it is. This is it. All right. So I got to reroute this back to three and four. Make sure we do that. Okay. I have that as my option now. So I can, again, I can route this in any different ways possible. Quick little loop here with some drums that are within the DAW to make it work, okay? I'm just going to de deep dive into Ableton real quick. I want you guys to fully understand this thing in Ableton before I move over to another DAW like Studio One and try to go through some of the similar routing, okay? Um, let's do... Try to throw your hands. So the way I have to do this is it's best to have like if you have the songs, which me I wasn't really as smart in this when I did this 15 years ago as a, like a 15 year old, 13 year old. Um, you want to try to find the song. All right, here it is. So I like to title the songs the same things that I titled the section so I can always look for it here so I know exactly what sounds I have for the list. Okay? So here's a quick little option here. All right? Um, I'm going to go back to that menu section to go to System and put it under Slave MIDI. What that's going to allow me to do is I'm going to... Here's all that sound again. I gotta wrap this over to three and four. Here's my piano that I have from earlier. Again, with this, I can do all my automation. And what is it gonna do? It's just gonna it's just gonna play through the song. Because it's synced up, now it should run.
and I made a full song off of this, and it's just gonna play through the song itself. So if I were to solo it, you actually will start to see that I actually had a different song. But just making a loop was completely different. So I have all those options now. So keep in mind in that this is this this works wonders, wonders, wonders. And I hope that you know some of this that I could teach and go through with you will help you along the way. So um, for more information on more stuff like this, or or even when I do some more beat streaming stuff, go over to my mini link page. Um, which goes to all my stuff on Instagram, all my stuff on Facebook, all my stuff on Twitter, all my stuff on YouTube. Um, I'm currently streaming this on multi-platforms right now, so you guys can get all this information at any given time, any place, anywhere, all right? Um, so feel free to go through that, some of that stuff, okay? Um, hopefully that allows you to help out for some of you Ableton users. Um, let's say throw hands before closing. No, all right. So let's get into uh, one of my favorite DAWs, Studio One. By the way, I currently do not use Pro Tools, um, mostly because I don't think my computer can handle it, to be quite honest. Um, but I have used Pro Tools for years. I've managed to kind of do the same routing, similar routing on there as well. So check some for, for more information on that just to see. Um, don't quote me on that, but you should be able to do the same sense of routing there too, okay? All right, so here's Studio One, okay? So I'm going to try to do something similar to this like we did with the other one where I wanted to route it. First thing I got to do is make sure that it's routed correctly. Now you see on the bottom here I have two different ins and outs, all right? So what you see is Phantom X6 in and Phantom X6 out. So for me to do that is... I have to go to Phantom, I have to type in, now the way that I did this was there's not a presetted um, section for this. You have, to cre you have to create your own. So for an example, if I were to go to add, I'll have to go into new keyboard or new instrument, okay? I cannot go down here and find Roland and say, oh, here is this. I can make one. Now you see where it says F x6 out is because i've created one by typing in the manufacturer's name and telling you what the the key device name is okay so i have to create two different sources okay number one i have to go through to receive wait, let me make sure I'm, you guys can hear me okay cool so the first thing i have to do um is i have to go into receive all right and then i have to go and find the section where i found the phantom x and I want this to receive from and to send to in the same section. And I want all 16 MIDI channels because I'm going to try to do the same similar thing we did with the other one. All right. Now, the next thing I got to do is I got to go to FX6 out. Receive from to FM Phantom X to Phantom X. It might say some weird stuff. I'm like, why are you doing it this way? It makes all the sense in the world. You're going to send a MIDI clock. You're going to use the MIDI clock. And you're going to send a MIDI time code. This... Um, I've kind of just set as the regular defaults. I press OK. If you want to create your own, um, you'll have to go into uh, Instrument Track and set this to where I want to go to FX6 Out. And then here's the 16 channels again. Now, I believe... Let me go and get rid of that. Uh... I'm gonna see if I think I believe I have some presets in here that I've made. Unknown vendor. 
or a template. Templates. Yep, here it is. Phantom X preset song template. I'm going to select open. As you can see, I've routed this the same exact way. RFX, one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, let's do volume pan and let's do the instruments as well. I'm going to select. Uh, let's see if it does it. Oh, that's weird. Let's try that one more time. So we're going to do song data templates version four. That's because it's just an old file. There it is. Now I'm going to select the, I don't really need the marker tracks. I'm going to select this entire folder. So everything is sent to this entire folder and I'm going to send the X Phantom X L R. This is just the audio. I'll press okay. All right. So here's my, here's my left, right. And I'm going to open up the folder and boom, here's every single 16 channels that I've routed to. So if I were to go to system and slave MIDI again, it should allow me to do it. I'm going to do, let's see, it's under MIDI. Um, for some reason, it's set over to 175. So... All I got to do here is uh, route this to three and four. So you guys are probably hearing something weird. So here's three and four. Now, the way I'm going to do this is let me make sure I turn it off first. So I want you guys to hear... So, got everything routed the way I want to, right? So, um, 1 through 16, going all the way down the line. Now, it doesn't have, obviously, you can see that it doesn't have anything with an instrument in it. All it has is just a regular Phantom X6 in, and then there's none into the instrument itself. Um, I believe that's because that instrument is out, so... I have to recreate that section. So the way I do this, I have to go to add new instrument. We're going to receive from Phantom X. Port is already in use. I believe actually, I think I had to save somewhere. And since this is a new session, I don't think it saved it. So I have to reroute it again. It'll tell me those prompts again. I'm going to say Roland. New instrument. I'm going to say FX. I'm going to say FX6 out. I'm going to go to all channels, clock, time code. It's going to allow me to do that now. Okay. I'm going to go back into my menu to go to system. Allow to go to slave MIDI mode. It should. Yep. And there it is. The sync's up. And it's sticking with the metronome time code. And I could change this to 80. And change the tempo at any given point in time that I want to. The way that I will record this is I'll put a pre-count just so it can get ready. Okay, so it only now for this one it only sends out the signals that are actually being routed to. Okay, um, if I were to record it now, the only thing you might want to take a look at though, um, however, is 
having um, routing latency. So CC automation interval, which is fine. Um, you might want to just try to find ways to where you can figure out some ways to get the offset so it can go right on time. Sometimes you might miss some stuff. You might want to do like a pre-count type of deal um, in your DAW to make sure that that works. So maybe adding like a measure or something like that, that might help it. Okay. So I'll go back in the beginning. Now, the only reason why you're here in certain areas where I got more stuff in here is because I muted some sections. So if I go back to Mixer on my Phantom X6 and let's say I want to mute. I want to mute this section right here. There's RFX one. That's just that uh, keyboard or uh, the guitar section I had in there. So, so I'm going to turn. I'm going to delete this. I no longer need this. And again, I can go over to instruments. Actually, you know what we'll do? We'll go over to uh, contact. All right. So, yes, you can even use stock or third party plugins to make sure that this works. All right. I'll use uh, stuff from my library. Um, so, let's say we go to bands, we go to guitar, we'll pick like their version of a jazz guitar. <laughs> Okay, same deal. I can go in and select another one. It'll ask me to replace it. Probably not the best one to use. But I can still do the same thing. I can go into, I'll go into like templates or whatever. Okay, same deal, back and forth, over and over again, it makes a whole amount of difference. Um, take a pause here real quick, want to make sure if people got questions. Don't want to hear anything stolen, Jesus Christ. Yeah, shout out, shout out. All right, um, make sure everything is all set, good, and ready to go. Okay. Um, you guys are looking exactly what I'm looking at, so it does not make any difference. I believe you guys are looking. Oh, okay. So you're all looking at that. So um, again, I have all the capabilities of doing that. And all I have to do is just route it this way. Okay. Cool, cool, and cool. All right. So uh, I want to change your settings. No. So this one we won't save. This is just for a quick example. Um, let's try FL. Here's another one. This one I had to create a template. All right. So I got to go over. I think there's still a user one that I've made. Uh, we will. So let's pick an old song that I did from years back. <laughs> I have to go into my old files. So let's do projects. We'll do uh, uh, 
I believe we can do one of these. Let's do order. One of these has like the preset in there. Yep, so here it is. This is 12. I do not, I'm not currently using, uh, I think it's Alt Z, right? Oh, nope, that is not Alt Z. What is it now? Control Shift Z. Edit. Let's do options, tools. Oh, here. Zip selected, Alt Z. Yeah, that's what I did. Oh, I was being routed into a G4 section. So that I have to take care of. And so this one I had to create separate channels. And then I have to go into one of these sections here and select three and four. And this is depending on where you got it routed to. So for me, it's three and four. Other sections for other people might be, you know, five and six, one and two, 17 or, yeah, 17, 18 or 15, 16. All right. So here's how this one's routed. First, I got to, I have to explain in here in the settings section under audio or under MIDI rather. You have to go down to, uh, let's see, where is it, where is it? Here's your Phantom X. Send it to a port here. Now, I have to send this into different ports because right now I'm running MIDI through here, but I'm, res but I'm also running different MIDI through my uh, Behringer X-Touch. So for me to do this, I have to go over to Fan two Phantom X. Here's the sync. Here's one. I have to go down to where it is Phantom X. Here's one, here's the port, here's the port. So one to one here. And then if you guys take a look, here's my X touch, which is routed into number two, just so I can keep it different from each other. So it doesn't um, collide with each other in a way. All right. So if I were to go to here and I got to go to F9 and select three and four. which I believe it's doing something different. Let's do master three and four. So what we're going to do is I'm going to turn this off. Make sure everything is okay. Okay. Um, make sure everything's not set. Now you'll notice that it might be a section in here that's so here's three and four. I'm going to turn three and four off and here. I'm going to change it into its own section. Here's three and four. So, so you can see anything I'm playing is riding right to it. So if I want it to, let's say I want to use channel one and currently I have a section in here. What I'm gonna do, f what I'm gonna do for this example, is copy that section. I'm gonna go back over to the piano roll. But I'm gonna use my keyboard's version of its uh, clav.
it's all funk ish stuff, but it makes a lot of sense because this is just older stuff that I've I've made for a while. Um, so hopefully this made a lot of sense. So I've shown you how to do it in FL. I've showed you how to do it in live. I've showed you how to do it in Studio One. Real quick before actually we end this off. Um, the way that I have to route this is I have to go to port one. I know that port one is my section to where it's being routed to. For it to work, you have to... Uh, sorry, I forgot about this totally. Um, if you press add channel and you go all the way down to where I believe it just says MIDI out and then rename it, you're going to click a port and then you're going to select the channel. Obviously, you can only go up to 16. So that allows me to do these things that I want to do here. So 1 through 16 here. And I can do this. And for some of you users who have this capability, for me, if for some reason it's, got, it's gotten blocked, I could do Control-Z or just go into here. It says Zip Selected. Bam. Now all those things are in the section where I have it zipped. I can also add another filter group, this, that, and the third. So it allows me to kind of go through those those prompts. So I just thought, again, maybe this will help a lot of people out. I know a lot of people are using um, older equipment and trying to make it work. Um, this was one that I've had for almost 15 years, and it has not steered me into the wrong direction. I had to do a lot of troubleshooting to make it work. It, it went through some adversity, going through new updates, with new computers and it's trying to catch up but i've managed it to make it work so for those of y'all who are trying to do that for windows users um mac users you should have the same similar situation the only thing you'll have to do different is uh the way you're doing your uh your driver setup for that so there might be something for you for backwards compatibility for that don't quote me on that i'm not 100 percent um uh confident in that statement but you should be able to go through those sections so um any of you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, you know where to find it. Minilink.co slash at DJS Time Productions will give you to any place that I want to go through with you. Um, you can check out all of my stuff like this. I am currently on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. Uh, I'm going to try to go into some other sections. You guys have some areas where you think I'm missing out on. Tell me where to put them in. I'll go and try to feed to the masses. So hopefully this helped you guys out. Um, again, thank you all who've taken the time to kind of watch, watch. And uh, until then, God bless y'all. Have a lovely and safe uh, weekend into the next week. Stay strong. Um, speak everything into existence. Be patient. I know a lot of people are on their quarantine right now. It's almost over. Be creative during this time. All right? Thank y'all. Peace out. Peace, love. Out.